This head of youth development has a dilemma. The aim of this challenge is to get five players from the under 21s to make their first team debut. So we're playing with the senior team's preferred 4-3-3 formation. However, when you take out all of these first team prospects who are going out on loan this season, we're left with some gaping holes. From the players who are left, it turns out the vast majority are forwards and a 3-2-5 formation is the only way to get them all in the team at the same time. Sadly, archaic 1950s football doesn't feel like a route to first team glory, so I think even more of those youngsters will need to leave on loan, and I will be keeping a very close eye on them. One player I think I'll be keeping around, though, is Will Lankshire. He already has some fantastic qualities. His off-the-ball and anticipation are brilliant. He's naturally incredibly fit, already got good pace for an 18-year-old, and his potential is immense. The downside though is his determination is absolutely minuscule. So if he's genuinely going to be as good a player as Harry Kane in future, he needs mentoring. I'll move Lankshire up to the senior squad, make sure he's still available for the under 21s of course, and then get him mentored by both Son and Harry Kane for as long as he's still at the club. I did mention in the previous episode though, there are some things that you still need to do for the first team, even when you're playing as the head of youth development. If you missed that first episode, check it out. Look, it's up there right now. One of those is deciding on the first team squad for the season ahead, but it's not my responsibility. All you have to do, auto select and confirm. Back to the under 21s and I've been offering Alfie Dorrington out for loan. He's another player with phenomenal potential. I have promised him we will find him alone this season. None of the clubs who are interested want to pay 30% of his wages though, but it doesn't matter because this story is not about money. It's about developing Premier League quality players. And to get those players on the pathway to the first team, it's very helpful to know what our assistant manager, Mike Phelan, is actually looking for from them. Take Will Lankshire, for example. He wants him to work on his composure and decisions in the final third. Sure. Billy Heaps, he wants to work on his passing and vision. No problem. And Josiah Linton needs a bit more pace and acceleration. Absolutely fine, Mike. If it's going to make you happy with their development, I am all in on it. Now for our next match against Birmingham's under-21s, I'm going to try and asymmetric 4-2-3-1 gets a lot of our best youngsters onto the pitch but that balanced possession approach in the first half really didn't work an absolutely pathetic xg before half time it was only when i changed it up to a tiki taka formation we really took charge and we did emerge with a 2-1 victory harrett and lions foster had good games but it was actually our two substitutes who managed to score our goals. We conceded the first in the 78th minute, but then Richarlison floated the ball into the box and a spill from their goalkeeper allowed Heaps to knock in. And we played some beautiful football leading up to our second goal. Dane Scarlett putting away what a quality finish from a quality La Celso pass. That should boost morale, as should praising the players for training well. I will be using every trick up my sleeve to improve player morale and make sure that they are in the best possible mood to focus on their own development. Well, one thing that's improved my mood pretty dramatically is new under 21 central defensive signing, Ashley Phillips. He's tall, he's fast, he's determined, he's already pretty strong for an 18 year old and he's not too shabby on the ball. I think we have a libero in the making here. And in fact, I'm gonna make him the under 20 anyone's vice captain for the season he will be a bedrock of the team with absolutely brilliant potential and he is off to a winning start 7.3 on his debut versus Bournemouth under 21's 2-1 victory 64% possession we had in this game an incredible 23 shots on goal that first one by Craig absolute quality in fact all of the goals in this game were absolute bangers even Bournemouth's equaliser they tried to work it into the box, failed, played it back, and Stevens from outside the area thundered the ball home past Gunter. But then Parrott on the wing, cutting it back towards Lo Celso, who didn't manage to get on it. It eventually came to Santiago and another fantastic strike. And in other most excellent news, another new player for the under-21s, Alejo Veliz, has signed potentially Premier League standard, already good enough for the championship. We'll get him training as a complete 
forward. It's Friday, the 11th of August, the day before our opening match of the Premier League season and the day before Harry Kane leaves for Bayern Munich again. We really do have some great striking options in these under-21s with phenomenal potential, so I don't think I've got any option but to play with two up front. If I'm going to develop these players, they have to be ones who have got the potential to play for the first team. I can't just go with a formation that matches the tactic the first team play. So we're going for a diamond and it helps us to a 2-1 victory away at Newcastle's under-21s. We absolutely dominated possession, 70%. Marginal XG though. Dorrington, Donnelly, Valise, all on form, divine with a player of the match performance from the bench. First goal came from a throw-in. Udogi to Valise. Scott with a corner for Newcastle, nodded in by MacArthur. Alfie Devine's free kick from miles out sealed the victory. And if we take a look at that starting lineup, it wasn't just the kids. Skip and Udogi in this instance from the first team squad providing a little bit more experience and a little bit more quality for the rest of these youngsters to look up to. So it's goodbye Harry Day, an £86 million transfer. The fans will miss having this club favourite around, but it's made no difference to Levy whatsoever. He's still expecting us to qualify for the Europa League and reach the latter stages of the FA Cup. What can Mike Phelan do, I wonder? The fans are certainly expecting a victory against Everton on the opening day of the season. And a victory it is! Just 1-0 with Ben Davis scoring the winner in the 92nd minute. We did boss possession, we had a higher XG, we created 12 opportunities. But you know what? Mike only made one substitution in the 85th minute. Mike, please, please don't destroy the first team in the process of trying to get them into Europe. With Kane leaving, our mentoring group needs a little bit of work. So we'll add in Jamie Donnelly, another high potential youngster who's going to get a significant effect from Son's inspirational leadership. Mike Phelan wins his second match of the season away at Burnley. This was a 2-1 victory where again we were on top for possession and XG. This time, Mike didn't make a single substitute that is a worry and one to keep an eye on. But Jamie Donnelly was on the bench, so it feels like we are getting close already to that elusive first appearance from one of our under-21 graduates. It's now the 25th of August. Alfie Devine has sealed his loan move to Port Vale and Troy Parrott has gone to Excelsior. That's freed up a couple of spots in the under-21 team and Mikey Moore is now fit to make it onto the bench. He's only 16 years old. We moved him up from the under-18s on our very first day in the job because he could be one of the greatest players at the club. But potential on its own is not enough. We went down 2-1 to Derby's under-21s despite absolutely bossing possession and XG. And to be perfectly honest, it was my fault. Tactically, I was playing with an inverted fullback and an inverted wingback. We were incredibly narrow. It was only when I opened things up with wingbacks in the second half that we created our opportunities. But don't worry, because Mike Phelan knows what he's doing. A 4-3 victory against the Cherries sends Spurs top of the Premier League after three games, courtesy of the pierre emile Hoiberg hat-trick. Yes, you heard that right. And I can't say I'm surprised that Bournemouth scored twice in injury time because once again, not a single substitution. I've been expecting these first team debuts to come off the bench, but hmm, maybe Mike Phelan is not the man to develop these under 21s. Surely he'll rotate for the League Cup though, I thought. Well, no. First choice team, again, two substitutions this time, but the first was in the 86th minute, the other in injury time, and it was Pedro Porro and Ollie Skip. So uh, still no first team graduate yet. But let's take the positives where we can. It's the 1st of September, Spurs are top of the Premier League, Mike Phelan has just won the Premier League's Manager of the Month award, and I'm not getting sacked yet due to Phelan's phenomenal performance. So this crazy experiment can continue for a while longer. So far, so good. But most importantly, Jamie Donnelly has been benefited from his mentoring. His temperament has improved, he is more focused on his game and he looks more determined than ever. Now that is progress. We have one final under 21 match against Wolves before the transfer window closes and our squad for the season is set. 
and we beat them 3-1. I played around with the formation again for this game. I'm really struggling to work out what the best tactical approach is for this group of players. We're playing with a 4-2-4 gegenpress system in this game, but we had to rely on those experienced first teamers to get us out of trouble. The assist from Lo Celso and actually two goals from Mana Solomon are what got us the victory. But what we do need is to improve defensively. We just do still leave too many gaps at the back. I know these players are young, but I do want them to become more defensively solid than that. Unfortunately, Lancashire picked up an injury as well, so he will be out for three to four weeks. So it's probably a good thing that nobody wanted to sign Santiago on loan. We've got more striking options still. Dorrington also failed to attract any offers, which for me, for the under 21s, is actually pretty good news. Sadly though, I do think it's gonna be a while before they start troubling the first team. I'm starting to worry that Mike Phelan might not be the assistant manager I'm looking for. He did make four substitutions against Brentford, but he named three goalkeepers on the bench. Looks like there's only one way to get him believing in my under 21s. That is training. Together, we'll make these young prospects the very best players they can possibly be. Subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on and join me again soon, my excellent friends. Be excellent to each other.